XFM. Well, you're listening to Zoe Ball on XFM on the show today. Wigan's most famous son, frontman with arguably one of the most influential bands of the 90s, creator of history and bittersweet symphony. Uh, now on his second, but if you're counting urban hymns, because he did write all the songs, then third solo album, sporting new short lots. Welcome to XFM, Richard Ashcroft. Oh, that was tremendous. Thank was you that very all right? much. Was that a good big up? Excellent. Beautiful. We started well. How was uh, the Teenage Cancer Trust gig at the Royal Albert oh, Hall? It was a great night. Um, you know, because. Um, I'm terrible trying to get support bands, you know. Cause, um, <laughs> what I'm, a support band you had! Unbelievable. Yeah, the Verve and myself. Um, there's always been a problem with support bands. We really just have a <laughs> DJ, but this, what a great support band! Yeah, it was uh, Roger Daltrey, Noel, Liam, Paul Weller, Kelly Jones. It was incredible. Were you yeah. not tempted to go on early? Um, what? Go and join them? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't even proficient enough to have joined <laughs> such an outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Do you like playing the Royal Albert Hall? It's such a stunning venue. Oh, it's incredible. Yeah. I mean, it's it's one of those places that you can't help staring at the ceiling, you know, when you first walk in for the first 10 or 15 minutes. And especially from the stage, you know, yeah. to see people singing the tunes right up in the gods, it's, yeah, it's a great feeling. Yeah, but you I mean, see everyone's faces, can't you? Yeah. I mean, that, uh, Roger Dockery's done a great job with that. I mean, that that's well on the way to another ward built in Liverpool now. So, I mean, I think that's the ninth or tenth ward they've done with this thing. So, uh, yeah, it's a great night. Let's hope they do it again next year. Amazing line they had. Uh, have you been pleased with uh, the reaction to human conditions? Because although greatly received around the world, you got sort of some harsh criticism here in Britain for alone with everybody. So this time, a lot pretty... more love shown, do you reckon? Um, I don't necessarily think from the people, the critics, I don't think there was that much love shown for my record again this time. But I think from the people itself, it's been amazing, yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, I've been in a situation before with a Verve where um, I think we released one of the greatest rock and roll albums of the 90s. And, um, we just didn't happen to release it at a time, at the right time. Yeah. And, uh, and that was similar to Radiohead at the same time we're releasing a great record and um, they didn't release it at the, same, at the right time or mm -hmm. what the kind of, the media cr it decided was the right time. And I think it's similar with my solo thing. I think it's, I, I've continued, have not got better. It's just um, a lot of it's timing and, and um, a, a kind of agenda that's set, that's beyond my control. So yeah. uh, the reaction I've had from the people on the street, I've had a chance to hear it, you know, has been fantastic. So I'm really positive about it at the moment. Excellent. I'll ask you stuff. Now, it uh, features great talents of uh, Talvin Singh and Tablers and Shruti Bots. I won't list them because I'll probably get them wrong. And uh, of course, uh, Stones and Allman Brothers, uh, pianist Chick Le uh, Level, uh, on uh, By and Bottles, which we'll talk about in a minute. But most exciting has to be the presence of Brian Wilson on Nature is the Law. How did you pull that off? Yeah, incredible. I mean, I've always thought about kind of uh, <laughs> visualization or daydreaming or whatever you want to call it, but it was the same thing. I was listening to the track. Uh, and it was almost finished and uh, literally the track made me daydream about Brian Wilson and Dennis Wilson, his brother, and the Beach Boys and uh, beyond, from the daydream got a bit more intense into, mm -hmm. God, it'd be great if Brian could sing on this and um, luckily for me, three days later, I met someone who knew his manager and I, I gave them this um, dream, this idea and the tape made its way to Brian and he liked the song and agreed to do it and within three or four weeks I was getting a tape back from Los Angeles with his vocals on it which to me obviously was... I've said before, it's like working with a master, you know, I, by no means do I put myself on the same level as Brian, but, you know, right. it's fantastic. Like a little boy. Did you work with him, or he d didn't he do stuff out in LA? Do you reckon, yeah, he, was he that easier for you? Yeah, I think it was the right thing, you know, I mean, one, I'd have been too nervous, and <laughs> you just don't want to spoil events by, you know, again, like I said, he's a master, you know, you yeah. don't go in there and say, mm, you know, you to, to Da Vinci. This. <laughs> no going to Da Vinci and go, mm, Mona Lisa lovely, but that left eyebrow. That is a very good point. Talking of collaborations, um, uh, you popped on the stage when DJ Shadow was at the ICA. Any uh, chance of you doing anything together again with DJ Shadow? I tried to get Shadow to work on um, Check the Meaning, and I thought it would mm -hmm. be a great track uh, for him to have had a look at on this record. But uh, he was just finishing his new album, so he didn't get a chance to do it. But I would, would love to um, work with Shadow again, because he's... Again, I think in his own right. He's kind yeah. of a master in his own right. Again, he's a, he's a modern-day master. Excellent. Well, let's talk about the new single, Bite and Bottles. What's the uh, message? What's the thinking behind it? Um, it's, 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 it's pretty much like a lot of my songs. I don't really know what the message of thinking is until... Sometimes I don't know until months later, years later. But at the moment, it's... Uh, you know, I'm saying I know pretty much many of the paths we all take to get it through the night or salvation. And... Um, I'm not claiming to be there, but I'm claiming that I found something pretty beautiful. And she stood right in the corner in this room. Oh, oh, stop. <laughs> That's lovely. Well, okay, okay, will you play it for us now then? Bite and bottles. I was talking about my manager, Mark, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Is he the one <laughs> Everyone keeps thinking he's your No, dad. that's Rex, the guitar Rex, tech, yeah. Rex, he's a really good stunt double. Okay, uh, Richard Ashcroft on XFM, his bite and bottles. Come on down And look, please don't make a sound And let nature strike a chord Cause nature is the Lord 
Do soundtracks in my life today. You've chosen right, three yeah. records that mean a yeah, lot to very you. Very quickly, you know, you know. Okay, very quickly. Yeah. All right, we'll do that after the news. Here's the okay. Foo Fighters. More from Richard coming up. and the reasons why and uh, very special for you today Richard Ashcross is actually going to give us three records he loves yeah, okay now Richard <laughs> normally we play this wibbly music and we all yeah, shout get it on. so stick, get, it on. stick on the wibbly music. Get the wibbly music this is for you to tell us why you love this record yeah TVI by the Stooges um, fond memories of the Stooges they um they entered the Verve's lives in all seriousness I think around the early tours around 92 um and they became the soundtrack to our tours we had a Ford Transit van that was souped up by uh, our manager's dad <laughs> who uh, put a big piece of wood behind the seats, behind the driver, with speakers built into it. So we've spent many a night with our, you know, blood pressure and heartbeat uh, racing with the Stooges on blasting out this piece of plank of wood at full blast. <laughs> and this is dedicated to this guy, this, he was one of an early, uh, I can't remember his name now, and I'll be disappointed if he's listening, he probably is, um, he's probably one of our earliest fans. Russell, if you're out there, mate, you probably remember this, because you were our uh, first fan in London, so we decided that he was on the guest list for life, and he travelled with us for the first uh, two weeks, or uh, three weeks I think he was with us, he stayed at my flat in Wigan, or, and um, there was no room for Russell, so we had to sit on top of a bin in the transit, <laughs> and this one's for you, Russell, Excellent. I hope you've got a more comfy seat in life now. <laughs> there we go, then. Ashcroft's soundtrack to his life today. Oh. Stooges. TVI, especially for Russell, I believe. Yeah. yeah, Russell as well. I want a little postscript to that. Because <laughs> he was, um, not long after those early tours, he was a mod the next time I saw him. So if you're, you're into hip-hop now and you're selling crack outside Brixton and I'm cramping your style right now. <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> okay, what's your next track then on your soundtrack to your life? Um, next track is um, by a band, The Stone Roses. She bangs the drums. It's a classic track. I think... Um, Almost like a modern day version of uh, Mr. Tambourine Man by the Birds and um, captures that same essence that almost there she goes by the Lars. But the amazing thing about the Roses is that they weren't as big as we imagined at the time. It was just that it was the first time that anything that 
my generation actually liked or had many revel relevance um, became popular you know we celebrated when Mondays and the Roses were on top of the pops and all that as if it was a big deal and now we take it for granted when anyone we like's on top of the pops and things it was a different time but Sheep Bangs the Drums kind of captures that essence of that mood that p feeling of confidence and youth and the band expressed that that you could do it if you wanted to do and I think um, you know they had a big impression on my life and you know probably a lot of other bands that uh, have come up since then you know excellent here we go Stan Roses Stone Roses, she bangs the drum, second choice, Sean Richards, sure. all very popular sure. choices. I just have to point out at this point um, that uh, we've just had an email in which he says, I'm seriously considering legal action. We're so engrossed listening to XFM, uh, to Richard singing Bite and Bottles. I narrowly avoided driving into the back of a brand new BMW and I <laughs> wet myself. This is from Chris from Seven Oaks. So we're just wondering how he emailed if he's wet himself in the car. Exactly. The technology yeah. for you. Okay, what's your third track you're going to choose today? Uh, the third track's by um, another master, uh, Marvin Gaye, um, What's Going On. I mean, obviously it's it's as relevant today as it was the day it came out. Um, many reasons why I chose this. Uh, Marvin Gaye's vocal technique, the fact that he can put over a social message and political message without it being sort of overwrought and crass. It makes you groove, you groove into a social message, which <laughs> is something that Bob Marley could do, but it's very rare that people can make you groove to that. And um, this track is just extraordinary, what's going on. Maybe well, that went really well, didn't it? They were just getting into our groove there. Um, is, there can you, is the CD all right? Can we clean it? I'm so sorry. This is very shoddy, isn't it? Uh, is it going to work, Paul? Because I said it was going well. I oh, know. Yeah, that's true. Uh, is it gonna, do you reckon we'll it's going to work again. or should we have a bit of a chat? No, I think we're, we're right, playing one more crossed, go. Everybody. It's probably all Chris's fault. What a fine selection. Marvin Gaye, what's going on? Stone Roses, she bangs the drum and Stooges TV. That was Richard Ashcroft's soundtrack to his life. Uh, Richard on the show with us today. Uh, now, I understand you took your wee lad Sonny on tour with you. Uh, you. Uh, does he enjoy life on the road? Do you have to slightly change the rider? Different videos on the tour bus kind of thing? <laughs> yeah, I think like any parent, you know, my... Uh, at the moment, it's Shrek. He's yeah, absolutely oh yes. obsessed on uh, he's yeah, Woody loves Shrek. everywhere he walks, he's on his way somewhere, you know, with the proclaimers. <laughs> oh, he's on his way, everywhere he's on his way. Uh, oh, so, listen. which is great because, you know, if I can find the creator of Blues Clues, I'll shoot him. <laughs> 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 and any parent knows all about that. That is a frightening yeah. program, isn't it? Yeah, but uh, I mean, on the roads, yeah, I mean, there's lots of things that you don't plan for because mm -hmm. in naivety, you just go for it and, you know, you're sleeping in the back lounge on the bed and there's no harness for the child so you're holding on for dear life through the night with the orange lights flashing through the curtains and you've got this precious little thing in between you and it was pretty hairy at times but it's what being a musician's about or choosing this life mm -hmm. is hopefully you amongst the madness you get some sense of freedom and you know and that's why i had a child as well to try and be with him as much as possible before he goes off to school you know what i mean so yeah. in, in lots of different ways it was great and ov obviously in other ways it wasn't it, it, it obviously wasn't like tour in America or Europe in 1992, mm -hmm. but in many ways that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does he like your music? And if uh, he was, wanted to be a musician, would you encourage him? I mean, he's really. I mean, he's very picky about tunes. You know, he's. <laughs> I've said it before, but it's a bit unfortunate. He loves JJ Kale cocaine. So <laughs> he'll be saying more cocaine, more cocaine, Mama, from the back seat, which is. Obviously, we unfortunate. So that's been stopped since that started. We've had to stop JJ Kale in the car. But I mean, he looked like Science of Silence. He called it rock off my new album. Excellent. And I think that's a w wonderful sign when, like, the innocents, they get that immediacy mm -hmm. and they tap into it and they tap into melody and they tap into it. You know, just any any track that I make that's got that freshness, that vibe about it, he loves, mm -hmm. you know. Excellent. That's cool. Have you ever uh, been approached or considered writing a film score? Yeah, I've been approached, um, and I, I have considered it, I'd love to do mm -hmm. it, um, it's just waiting for the right film, really, and mm -hmm. someone who's going to give me that kind of freedom to do the full works, you know, I'd like to mm -hmm. really have a good treatment on it, but it's a very, it sounds like a really easy gig, but it, it, it actually isn't, I've spoke to a few people that say it's pretty intense, because you suddenly, obviously you're dealing with film companies, and they're a whole new ball mm -hmm. game, never mind record companies, they're just a different league. 
back. So I think uh, it's it's something exciting. You know, I'd love to make the new shaft or whatever, but you know, <laughs> maybe one day. Couldn't they make a new shaft? Yeah. And they, they are actually doing there a new is, shaft. There, aren't is, they? there was a shaft too, anyway. But you know, uh, God knows what this new one's going to be like. Who knows? Right. Okay. And uh, what do you think? A lot of listeners are asking. What do you think about Simon Tong joining Blur on the stage in place of Bra uh, Graham well, Coxon? It's, it's like anything, you know. I suppose it's my first real taste of what it's like to have a mate or a peer or something be in a band or be famous because yeah. I was always the one or we were always the ones that were yeah. the ones who'd done something so it's it's kind of it, it's it's great for him obviously because he's um, you know he's going on and he's playing music and stuff but for all of us like it's just like Tonky's in blood <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard? <laughs> Tongi's in Blair. You're what? <laughs> Tongi's in Blair. And I think Tongi, because that's how we all know him, Tongi, he's obviously thinking, all them lot are saying, Tongi's in Blair. <laughs> so he's going through that few months at the moment where he knows everyone's saying, Tongi's in Blair. Will you go, so and, will you go and see him, do you reckon? Well, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I'll be seeing him. Excellent. Okay. Pay per view. <laughs> Are you going to be playing? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking, lads. Good luck oh, to you, lads. Bless him. Are you going to be doing any of the festivals? And are you going to have any more uh, singles from Human Conditions? Um, it, it, you know, if it, if it was up to me, I'd love to get Nature as the Law out as a single, the one mm -hmm. I did with Brian. But um, I don't know if that's going to happen. What I would like to happen, if that doesn't happen, get a new single out from the next record out this year. Um, oh. And if if the reactions are right to bite and bottles and it seems like people want me to play in England again. I might, might come back and do a tour in um, October or something like that. Right, excellent. Lots of your fans from your fan club saying they would like a, a small um, a small intimate gig. They all keep saying that. Yeah. Um, excellent. And uh, bite and bottles, of course, is in the shots right now and it features the video and there's also an alternative video. Is it worth buying both of them? Look, I did just that today. <laughs> <laughs> I buy music. You did it. Hey, yeah, just, just can I have? Do you know what? Yeah. Do you, you know, have you not got a copy? Let's forget. Let's forget my music and stuff. I want to talk about your dad. You know, like just. <laughs> Do you know, like, everyone likes, wants to talk about me being a dad now and how, yeah. you know, so Pete, now you, you live in the country, you make bread, you know, you've got a son, you've chilled out. You've got so, a peacock, but I just yeah. want, I, I want you, I've got a track on my album, and I want you to, to take, if your dad goes to Glastonbury, take him up to the top of Glastonbury and play him God in the Numbers. I will do. do yeah. you know, really and give him my that. love because he was almost like, um, legal valium for a young five, six year old <laughs> in those dark days in Wigan. Such that a soothing voice. First time I've ever heard him such describe a, a soothing voice. Such like. a soothing voice. Excellent. I'll tell him that. Great. I, my dad at Glastonbury, we took him to uh, Amsterdam for his 60th birthday. Fantastic. I'm saying no more about that <laughs> trip. It was uh, never... Anyway, I'm moving on. Uh, what are you going to play for us now? This then? one's uh, Check the Meaning. Excellent. Okay. Richard Ashcroft on XFM. Agnostic, you 